Oh, and and we haven't talked about the demise of the 818 and the FTM 400. I talked about it on the podcast, but I would love to talk about that. I, I, I <laughs> I'm would sorry love... to see the FTM 400 go. The 818, not so much. I mean, but I think the, I think the 891 outsells the 818 by a lot. But mm. the the 400 is a really nice radio. Um, yeah, the, I I looked at that in the 2730 when I first got a mobile radio, and I ended up getting the 2730 because it could do crossbed. Well, John talked about it. I think it was on Coffee and Ham Radios. But anyway, he talked about it, and he, and he said that the FTM 400, well, you've got the 300 and the 200. Those are not replacements for the 400. I'm sorry. Not the same radio. No. Completely different screen. And and the screen mm-hmm. does make a big difference. It really does. So why, why, would, you get rid of the, why would you get rid of the, the 400 that's sort of uh, like the, the, both the, of them. the top of the line? You know, touch screen, color. Both of them make any sense. According to John, both of them were discontinued because of parts availability. So they're using different stuff in the 300? I kind of doubt it. Well, they probably have to. I don't doubt it because the uh, the FTM 400 is, when did it come out? 2012? Yeah. And the FTM 400 came out last year. Let, and we'll talk logistics again. There, there's no reason to make huge changes to a product line. Just because you throw an XD on the back of it, it's it's only going to be a couple of features. Mm-hmm. And most of those, I'm assuming, are going to be like integrated devices, integrated functionality on a circuit board that they swap in and swap something out that they improved. The, they, the 400 is, is pretty much the same regardless of, of when you got it. And Scott mentions that the update was in 2017. That's five years older than the mm-hmm. FTM 300. So yes, I expect that the 300 is very different because last year, and I think leading up to this, Yesu kind of decided to do away with any reliance on manufacturing of chips and components that they did not have large control of. And that's why they were able to push out so many radios last year. I can't blame them, though. No, I, I mean, don't at all. That was really smart. You can so see are they going to replace them? Uh, we don't know. Yeah, John John can't say, and nobody at... at uh, uh, I mean, we, we, we don't know what Kenwood's going to do either. I mean, it, it's they, they, they can't say and they won't say. Yeah, uh, this is a really good point from Ted. So, Ted, we, we have we have examples of this in a couple of ways. The ICOM ID52 had to go through a redevelopment to get away from chips that also became harder to get. And I'm saying harder to get, meaning demand went up, cost went up associated to that, meaning the margins of that product went down. So they actually went back in and changed some of the chip design to get away from the chips that they were in hot competition with, right? The same thing happened with the transition from the FT3DR to the FT5DR. The FT3DR was only a couple years in uh, in the retail production environment, and they decided to stop producing that and bring out the FT5. It was not at end of life. The general argument which I've heard many people reiterate, I am reiterating what I'm told, I'm not just making this up, is five years. Five years is about how long a radio needs to be on the market before it's like totally just making money for the companies, recouped all expenses, blah, blah, blah. So the FT3 being stopped production and going to the five is a, a textbook example of they had to get away from something. There was something in their production chain that was costing them too much or was leading to extended wait periods, so they had to update them. Well, what, what John said is that they, they, they stopped production because they wanted to make sure that any radios that were sold, you bought a radio yesterday, mm-hmm. they would be able to fix it. Uh, and I'm sure they, mm-hmm. sure they have some sort of metric. So whatever components they would need to be able to to repair, you know, I'm sure it's probably like 20% or 10% or something or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they have, would have be able to have the parts in order to do that. And, and that makes sense. I get that. Yeah. You know, that's reasonable. Yeah. They still have uh, parts available for the uh, A57D. They do. Uh, so uh, they, they, have, they have done their uh, 
their logistics pretty well in the past. And and most well, of the companies do. I'm not saying Yesu's got the you know they're all they're all thinking about this. This is all something that factors in. Now, the thing that I find interesting is the eight eighteen, right? So let's talk about the lineage there. How long is that? Twenty plus years. That that radio can drink. Okay, in, in at least in its standard form. I know that it did go through an update with the eight eighteen or whatnot, but the eight seventeen has been around for a really really long time. And the eight seventeen, the eight fifty seven, and the eight ninety seven all came out at the same time. Right. right. But the 818 so, has tested, you know, the, the span of time and, and is still running, right, as the 818, but, but whatever. So for them to say, we're going to get rid of this radio that's been around forever and has a fairly, I don't want to say niche, but has a loyal following of people and people continue to find it because it is such a just a universally useful radio. The fact that they're putting that into out of production I truly believe is because they do have an issue with the parts. That that's it has to be because why why would you stop producing something that you can, can you have proven that you can consistently make and is consistently making money because they keep they're selling them they they've been selling them for a long time so it has to be a shortage it has to be uh, so James asked a good question were they not selling I assume you mean the eight eighteen so that's the interesting thing about this is I'm sure the the uh, intensity of sales of the eight eighteen has gone down. But they have probably honed their production to the point that it was very cost effective in making it, that they're just like when the demand shot up on some number of components, that they probably just had to say, look, this is really not going to be profitable for much longer. We should probably back off of both of it, make sure we have the components on hand to take care of everybody. But also, yeah, they have faced the 818 specifically in its, in its current incarnation has faced a ton of increased competition. And I'm not going to say the 705 specifically, although that's like my favorite radio, because that's like twice the price. But if you look at the Chinese, the effect of the G90, the G90 probably kneecapped the sales for the 818. And yeah, it doesn't have VHF, UHF, and, and single sideband on the high band stuff. Um, but that radio being $450, I'm sure ate away at a lot of the market share that the 818 was going after. But, and as I was reminded today when I was at the HRO, they were talking about how there really isn't that many single sideband two meter radios out there aside from the 818 at its price point, right? There's really nothing that is at that price point. Yep. Which, I yeah. mean, it, it's it's a very good universal radio. It does all the things. It, it doesn't have a lot of power, but who cares? Put up a better antenna and you'll still make contacts. So that's an interesting comment from Zach. The 857 was replaced by the 991. See, I don't But know it's bigger. The, the 991 8, is bigger. The right. 897 was replaced by the 991. Right. But the 857 was the portable. And there's nothing that does what the 857 did in any lineup yeah. at that size. There's nothing that does that at that form factor. Nothing. And, and what's funny about it is they still make the antenna for it. Well, yeah, because the 891 uses it. Yeah, well, and so does the FTDX ten and uh, the nine nine one, and yeah. so yeah. They're, right. they, uh, they're why why would you not them. have your radios use that antenna if they can? The nine nine one can. Oh, the really a rock ATOS. Out. Yeah, the ATOS. Yeah, the ATOS yeah. one twenty. I was always focused on form factor. I wasn't going any larger than the eight fifty seven as far as form factor of this discussion, and we were by and large talking about the eight eighteen. I want to get Mike in here to talk about his thoughts, but I will say. I feel like I am not of impeachable uh, objectivity when it comes to the 818 because I bought that totally just out of the blue. The radio I had failed on me. I ran to the Gigaparts in Las Vegas because I needed to do a POTA. And yes, I do have the luxury that I could just buy a radio, and I bought the 818. And my thought was... I at least have to try this radio. I haven't owned it in any incarnation. And frankly, I expected to not really like it when I went out to do the POTA. I took it out. I did the POTA. I really liked it. I think that it does a couple of things really well. Um, it is super universal, so it does a lot of things. It's fairly easy to use. The menu system, of course, the deep F menu still exists. It's all that stuff. But yeah, I, I'm... 
I am literally someone who walked in not really wanting to like it. I literally was putting myself into a situation where I was like, yeah, I'll just try it. It's the cheapest QRP radio that Gigaparts had at that at that location in Las Vegas. So that's what I ran with. And I had a great time. And I still like it. And I upgraded it. And I did a whole video on it, how I appreciate it for what it is and what it does. Yeah. Mike, do you want to add thoughts to it? Because I know you're, you're somewhat in the same camp as I am, I think. Uh, what camp is that? The... I'm surprised this radio is as cool as it is. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I, I bought the uh, I bought the 818 uh, the day that it was announced that it was um, out of production. Not, not out of production. Thank you. Um, just listen to that episode of the podcast today, too, Josh. Be very. Oh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> my privilege. Uh, oh, and also, uh, Podophiles. Hi, everyone. Podophiles. <laughs> yes. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I bought the radio, be, like, so I've never used the 818 or the 817 ever. Like, I've held it in my hands, I've seen yep. it in person, but I've Same. never used it. Same. And I bought it because I was like, you know what, this is like really a... Uh, it's a watershed kind of a, radio. It's a, well, it's it's more of like, a, I mean, it's been around for like 20 freaking years. It's, it's a got such capsule. a great following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, there, there's, there's got to be a reason that so many people yes. love this radio so much. Yes. And I, uh, you know, the, like the first YouTube channel that I started watching, Tony, K9ARV. That's right. Uh, he had the 817, and he would take it out in the park or, or wherever and, like, just make a contact or two, and he was happier than a pig and you know what. Yep. So I'm like, all right, I, I got to get it. So yesterday, I took it out on its maiden... Poda Voyage. I, I tweeted about it. I, I filmed the video, so I'll, I'll have that out probably uh, Wednesday. And I so I got the park activated in six minutes. Mm -hmm. Not too shabby for five watts. I was using a K6 ARK antenna. I, I, I had commissioned Adam to make me a special antenna Yes. Uh, for the G90. I, I actually wanted a 9 to 1. First time with the radio, first time with that antenna, and it just absolutely killed it. The So I called CQ, I think... Two, maybe three times tops, and then the pileup came. Got seventeen contacts, and I left because I had to. I had to get down to my buddy's house um, by like three o'clock or something. So I, I called it about at like one thirty. He was about an hour away from me. So good. We need um, all these details. We do. <laughs> the <clears throat> he lives in Kingwood, Texas. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. The the speaker is surprisingly loud. Yes. I was I was quite impressed with that. I was I was like, am I gonna have to struggle to hear this thing? Nope. I was very happy with it. So one thing that that like every single person I think that has the eight eighteen has done, and I'm surprised that I don't care about this at all, is that power pull adapter. I have zero desire to put that power pull adapter on here. I understand that. Um I, I think the I was just gonna once you're done talking, I'm gonna go to the size comparison. I think the world we have to all agree that having a, a pigtail off the back of your radio must stop immediately the 857 has that i hate that what do you mean pigtail it's literally got a power pigtail off the back there's not a connector. oh wow i didn't realize that yeah uh, the 897 does not that no well of course not it's like it's wait it's a what has what are you what are you calling a pigtail it's literally got a uh i don't know four inches of wire with the with the power connector coming out the back it's a point of failure is what it oh, is oh yeah and it's a nightmare to put in a bag. So, yeah, like, I'm totally fine. So I immediately cut the power cable. Actually, so all of my Yaesus, my VX7R, my FT5, and this all use the same coaxial plug, that tiny little oddball-sized plug. That's the reason. So is the, it's totally an oddball plug. totally fine with that. It's an oddball plug. But, but they all have, I put power poles on the plug, on the wire. So I understand, it's like, but it's, you know, it's one more thing to lose. This goes back to the 12-volt laptop and the whole thing. Like, if everything's power pole, then you just need power oh, pole dude. jumpers, and then you're good. Until you've experienced the nicety of having a 12-volt laptop and yes. just plugging it in, yes. you don't know what you're missing. Go watch my it Alex Loop video. I, I did talk amazing. about that. In the I movie. did watch that video. Yeah, that, that was me um, just like, look how amazing this is. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm but my thing is so like in in big geek in little geek on my workbench, um, and I have an extra. So I have like four of those same Yesu uh, power cords. So they're always with me because I'm always going to have my HT, and I'm always going to have my battery box. So like for me, because I'm like I own I think five Yesu radios right now. 
Um, I it's not in short supply. So having so not having uh, not having a power pole on the back isn't a big deal to me because then I'd still have to bring a wire that has power poles on it. Okay, so let's get this stuff out of the way. Well, the FTM four or the the F or uh, never mind. So there, there's the uh, that's the. So I did add, I did add the, uh, the pterodat, the pterosaur, the P pterosaur connectors there. Uh, the little is standoff. The petrosaur. No, it's the it's the P pterosaur. And you oh, can, you're changing you can see, the name again. That's right. You can see oh. that it's it's the eight fifty seven is much longer on mm -hmm. both ends. So if I if I backed it up to the, so antenna connector to antenna connector kind of thing, the eight the eight eighteen is much shorter than the eight. 57 and then width wise if i if i hold them up here the the 818 is probably again uh, remove these little side arms from the discussion it's probably about an inch shorter on the width and here's that pigtail oh god i hate this thing so that's the power connector mm -hmm. on the 857 it's it's literally a pigtail like when people talk about pig, this is literally what they mean when they're talking a pigtail. This is horrible. This is nightmare fuel. I now this is yeah, going to get sucks. replaced. This is going to get replaced with a uh, power pole because look, it's literally likely ground or something, and then you're hot and you're you're neutral or whatever, positive and negative to a five pin, technically a six pin connector. Why? This is this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Completely ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. And then it has the two antenna. Well, there's. Two two of those are hot, and two of those are uh, your ground. I, yeah, but so. you don't need that. It's but going, why? But all it's all it's going into is a power connector that is going to two leads. That's the factory know. power connector. Pro probably probably to help standardize that six pin connector. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, I my my old Kenwood TS four four thirty mm. uses the same connector. Now, where does UHF VHF come out on the eight eighteen? Uh. You select it as either the front or the back, and so, so it's the same connector as HF. Yeah, but it only one. So that that's that's actually one of my favorite things about that radio is you, there is mm -hmm. a BNC in the front and a SO two thirty nine in the back, and you can switch them. Meaning one will be VHF and the other will be uh, HF, and you can switch them. Boom, boom, back and forth. Oh, okay. You can't setting. you can't set it to be the same one. No, you cannot. And and here's the reason that, like on the 857, if you're connecting it to the ATOS, mm -hmm. you have to buy a uh, diplexer or duplexer, whichever one sure, it is. Sure, sure. In order to connect it to the ATOS. 